Hello, my name is Calvin Smith and today what I'll be doing is a demonstration of provisioning callbacks using Ansible Tower and the Red Hat Satellite Server. Provisioning callbacks are the ability of the Ansible Tower to accept calls into its API so that it can execute workflow on the machine that called it. And uh, that can be integrated into the satellite server to allow you to provision systems and then have the Ansible Tower get called at the time that the system once the system is provisioned for it to perform any subsequent workflow that's necessary before i get into the depths of things i just wanted to give a brief overview of the infrastructure that we're going to be using i'm going to have our ansible tower and we're going to have a satellite server of course for the purposes of this demonstration we also have a, a git repo i'm using gogs actually to store the Ansible content and uh, the server that we're going to be building, we're just going to call it new.demo.net. Okay, so let's take a look at what the Ansible playbook is going to look like. Uh, this is the playbook is a simple playbook that calls the Ansible role change banner, which is going to use this playbook here to change the banner um, for the console as well as change it for the SSH, SSH daemon. I've used it. In other demonstrations as well, but and I, and I think it'll be fine for this one. Uh, the contents of the new banner are going to be this right here. So now that we have that, we'll go to the Ansible Tower and we're going to set up the job template. And I'll kind of go over the details of what are necessary for provisioning callbacks and how to link them together in the satellite server. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a job template. We're going to call this uh, set banner. Uh, the inventory we're going to use is the satellite server inventory and the project will be the change banner project which is already connected to the change banner and git repo and we connect it to the change ban banner playbook file for credentials you need to make sure we use the tower ssh key the next thing we need to do is make sure to enable provision and callbacks we need to generate a host configuration key which is going to be used sort of as a password for the server that is calling in to the uh, to the ansible tower so we're going to make a copy of this and then we're going to save all of this information now an important detail here is the callback uh, url has an id number of 26 that's an id number of this job template as well so we want to make sure we make a note of that so we have our job template set up we're going to go to jobs and we're going to leave that there for now coming to the satellite server we need to configure our host group I've already started configure this host group uh, so that we can kind of go through the details pretty quickly here Using the default kickstart provisioning template, uh, there's a lot of parameters already set in there. So we just need to set these parameters in the host group and it will appropriately pull them in as it's doing the provisioning. So the, the settings that we need to do, turn on. The most important one is to enable Ansible Tower provisioning. The next one is the Ansible Tower, where the Ansible Tower is. It's Ansible Tower FQDN, the job template ID, which I told you we were going to need and then the host config key so we save we save that and then we can provision a server using that new job temp, using that new host group that we've created so let's give this server the name new uh, we're going to select the rally provisioning callback host group it's going to populate everything you see here if we go into the parameters we can see our settings have been appropriately configured and then we can start the provisioning process we can go to the console on the satellite server and monitor the provisioning process here and uh, I'm gonna accelerate this so that we could speed through this part of it but um, we're going to get to the point where the server will have completed its provisioning process 
and then it is going to uh, reboot after it reboots is when it's going to make the call into the Ansible tower one advantage of this is that you can then uh, integrate the, the provision and process with other third-party tools like uh, your monitoring system uh, your load balancer etc etc okay so the post provision and process looks like it's running right now uh, once that's finished the server should reboot and once the reboots completed the Ansible job should run so let's uh, actually see if we can put the satellite server window to one side and bring the Ansible tower window to the front so that we can see everything that is going on okay now that we have that set up let's fast forward through the rest of the installation and some of the reboot process as the provisioning callback isn't invoked until after the server has completed the reboot process okay so the server's rebooted and any moment now you should see the Ansible job get launched on the Ansible tower there it is there's a set banner running um, it's just started actually so it hasn't actually made the change yet and we do see our new uh, our new console there so let's scroll down and watch the job run All right, changes happen. It's all done. So we hit enter over here. There's our new banner file from the playbook over here. Okay, thank you, everyone. Uh, this was been my demonstration of the provisioning callbacks using Ansible Tower and Red Hat Satellite Server. If this was of use to you, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Thank you and have a nice day.